Stephen Shore and William Eggleston are so often mentioned in the same sentence when discussing color photography in the art world, but their use of color and everyday subject matter is as far as those similarities go. They're really very different photographers, so let's talk about how they're different and some ways you can tell their work apart. First, some brief background. Photographer Walker Evans famously said, quote, there are four simple words which must be whispered. Color photography is vulgar. It was considered for commercial use only. It was often oversaturated and garish. And even though some well-known photographers like Helen Levitt and Saul Leiter were using color for art as far back as the 1950s, it wasn't accepted in the art world. Well, John Sharkowski, director of photography at MoMA, accepted and appreciated color photography, but the general public still didn't care for it. In the spring of 1976, Sharkowski mounted the first showcase of color photography in a museum setting with the work of William Eggleston. New York Times writer Hilton Kramer wrote, quote, Mr. Sharkowski throws all caution to the winds and speaks of Mr. Eggleston's pictures as perfect. Perfect? Perfectly banal, perhaps. Perfectly boring, certainly. That fall, MoMA presented the work of Stephen Shore's series, Uncommon Places. In a review for the New York Times, writer Gene Thornton said, quote, his photographs are as bland and uncritical as the most ardent chamber of commerce Booster could desire. And this blandness and lack of comment makes Stephen Shore's photographs hard to take for a certain kind of viewer, among whom the present writer often finds himself. Why, one asks, should one bother to give serious attention to postcard views of backyards and boring towns? Now, I have not studied these photographers in an academic setting. I just want to give my opinion as a professional photographer of 20 years who spent a lot of time looking at the work of Shore and Eggleston for my own enjoyment. Here are the differences in my view. So first, what was their overall approach? Shore is essentially making a visual document. He has described his photos as consciously casual. So while they may feel like a snapshot taken at a random moment, there was much careful deliberation in the composition. Shore said, I was also interested in the fact that as I walk down the street, really paying attention to what I'm seeing, I see a constant change in relationships in space. It's seeing things in the background relating to things in the foreground. As I move, a telephone pole bears an ever-changing relationship to a building next to it or behind it. This mailbox changes its relationship to the telephone pole. These changes occur all the time as one simply takes a walk and looks with conscious attention at what's there while one is walking. I wanted somehow to record that experience in a still photograph. Now Eggleston says of his approach, quote, a picture is what it is and I've never noticed that it helps to talk about them or answer specific questions about them, much less volunteer information in words. He also said, I had this notion of what I called a democratic way of looking around, that nothing was more or less important. I've always assumed that the abstract qualities of photographs were very obvious. For instance, I can turn them upside down and they're still interesting to me as pictures. So in their approach, Shore is thinking deeply about composition and approach and a specific reason he's doing what he's doing, while Eggleston seems to be doing his best to put no definable thought or purpose behind his photography. With use of color, Shore's work feels analytical in his color as well. I feel like if I were standing next to him while the photo was being taken, I would see the same color with my eyes that we get in the final print. Eggleston's color feels heightened, saturated, and vibrant. His use of the dye transfer process to print his images brings out an almost surreal vividness to the color. In my view, if the color is deep, rich, and the focus of the image, it's an Eggleston photo. If it feels true to life and I feel like I'm looking through a window into the past. It's a Shore photo. With gear is another big difference. While Shore's early color work in American Surfaces was done on 35 millimeter film, for Uncommon Places, he moved to large format 8x10 film, which is nearly 60 times the size of a frame of 35 millimeter film. He was looking to pack in all the detail one would see if they were there looking at a scene. Everything in the frame is sharp. Nothing is subject to the photographer's selective focus. This also meant, since the camera in question was on a tripod, everything was carefully considered. Shore said, quote, first of all, forgetting a major question, what to photograph, let's say I'm photographing this intersection, and I see it as almost a three-dimensional problem that I have to resolve in some way. Where am I going to stand in this? Where am I going to cut it off? How much am I going to show? Am I going to wait for a person to stand in or for a car to stop? Eggleston worked primarily with 35 millimeter rangefinders. He said, quote, I had an old Canon and a Leica, but I didn't know the first thing about photography. Never learned it off anybody either. 
it quickly came to be that I grew interested in photographing whatever was there wherever I happened to be for any reason. Eggleston moves, his photos are fluid. He's reacting quickly to moments instead of stopping to consider. Now they both often photograph food, which is interesting to me in today's world where nearly everyone photographs their food in some manner. Many photographers before these two photographed food, but often in a way that was like a painter painting a still life. So Eggleston and Shore both often photograph meals they had or restaurants they visited, but I see a difference in their approach. Eggleston's use of food to me never seems to be about the food itself. It's about the quality of the light or richness of color. The food just happens to be there. Shore is documenting his meals. There isn't typically interesting light or color like in Eggleston's work. It's more of a visual diary of sorts, like an extension of his note taking, which we're going to talk about now. So the documentation between these two is night and day. Shore was meticulous with his notes. During his three years on the road for Uncommon Places, he wrote things like miles driven, restaurants dined in, including which meals he ate, hotel receipts, local postcards, and even what he watched on TV. His images have titles like Beverly Boulevard in La Brea Avenue, Los Angeles, California, June 21st, 1975. Eggleston photos had titles like Untitled, circa 1983 to 1986. To be fair, he would often give the city and or state and a specific year, but never a precise location or exact date. It was always something like Mississippi, 1971, or Memphis, 1979. For portraits or images containing people, Shore gave us the first and last names of his subjects along with the cities and dates. Eggleston gave no info. About this, Eggleston said, quote, people always want to know when something was taken, where it was taken, and God knows why it was taken. It gets really ridiculous. I mean, they're right there, whatever they are. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you found this video interesting or helpful in any way. I hope this provided a place for you to begin your own observations between Shore and Eggleston. If you've already been viewing their work for years, what would you add to this? Please let me know in the comments.